Hey guys, Ramsey here. Welcome to another video. Today we've got a little bit of a double header. It's going to be a unboxing, vintage and niche unboxing. Uh, one of these packages I purchased and two of them actually came from very kind subscribers and I have to give them a very special, special thank you. Uh, Paolo sent me one and Cullen sent me another. So, um, you know, in the spirit of generosity and sharing and kind of getting to know more fragrances, I have to say a big thank you to them. This will allow me to get my nose on a lot more things. Anything new to talk about on the channel is awesome because I get to kind of share it with you guys. Part two of this video is going to be a early impression on a Serge Luton. And I've been a little tough on Serge Luton, so this will be an interesting review because this review is going to be a little different than normal reviews because I'm not going to talk so much about how the fragrance breaks down as far as notes. I'm going to talk about how this fragrance makes me feel because this is uh, a fragrance that instantly conjured up images in my head. Very few fragrances have the ability to kind of project these big just mental pictures just like that as soon as I smell it. And this is one of them. This is called La Participe Passe. And I'm sure some Frenchman somewhere is writhing in pain on the ground as they're bleeding from the ears. However, uh, La Participe Passe came out in 2018 and uh, it's from the newer collection so it only comes in a bottle that basically looks like this. So it didn't come in the older bottle so I pretty much overlooked it because I figured, you know, the only Serge Luton worth getting in the new collection was uh, La Couche du Diable which I have thanks to a very kind friend. Uh, and so I've overlooked La Participe Passe. Uh, and to my detriment, because this is an amazing fragrance, I really like it. So and we'll talk about why here in a little bit. So, but let's do this unboxing first. So first, let's do the one that I actually purchased. Uh, I got a very good deal on this because this is number one, a discontinued fragrance. Number two, it is the older uh, version of the fragrance. So I have actually in my collection, I currently have the... Eau de Toilette, which I scored from uh, Anouge. Anouge, I don't know if he still has bottles at uh, Enchante, but these uh, Marbert, made in Germany, Eau de Toilette versions of Marbert Man are absolutely stunning. This is going to be the vintage version. This is going to be the Eau de Cologne version. And, you know, this is kind of one of those things that I'm talking about. It was an eBay bid. Uh, no one bid against me. You know why? Because no one hypes this fragrance. This isn't a hyped fragrance. I mean, I talk about how much I like it, but these very rarely come up for sale, and they very rarely come up for sale uh, with the full packaging, number one. And number two, they very rarely come up for sale where no one's bidding against you. So I got very lucky here. I will, uh, I will take my luck. And so this is the Eau de Cologne of Marbert Man. So speaking of vintage... And you can kind of see right here the short ingredient list. Marbert Man is um, one of my favorite honey fragrances of all time. I'd put it up there with the um, Hugo Boss number ones of the world. Uh, and so Marbert Man is a creation by Raymond Shailan, who I think is a masterful, brilliant uh, perfumer. And there you go. So you can see the difference between the bottle that I got from Anouge with the black writing and the vintage with the red. Uh, and this is the Eau de Cologne. Oh, cannot wait. Hell of a comparison. Hell of a comparison video coming up, friends. Spicy and somewhat leathery, slightly animalic as well in the dry down because it has ambergris and leather. Feels like a little bit of castorium. Kind of in the same way Givenchy gentlemen use castorium, but... The brilliance of this fragrance, at least from the one that I know, is this freshness. So this freshness is here, whereas Givenchy Gentleman, let's say, is a very heavy, it's more patchouli. Um, this, the patchouli is much more turned down than Givenchy Gentleman, but the honey has this freshness about it. Like, I could wear this any, any day. I could wear this in the middle of summer. Honestly, I feel comfortable. But now I have the vintage version added to my collection. So, uh, an absolute coup, especially at the price I got it at. Mmm. If everything's in good uh, condition, an absolute coup. Made in West Germany. 
Look at that. Oh, you gotta love it. Good, let the good times roll. Oh, and it comes with a little packet too. Don't you love how they used to do these back in the day? Oh, I miss the good old days. The hair tonic. Who doesn't want the Marbert Man hair tonic? Come on, guys. All right, enough of that. So this is the one I paid for. I'm very happy with my purchase. So um, that is the first one. This one is going to be from Paolo. So shout out to Paolo. He has a standing offer to come on a stream one day and show off his amazing collection, which uh, I, I know he has an amazing collection, uh, but he says he's shy, so he doesn't want to come on uh, yet, but maybe one day I can talk him into it. Okay, so here's what we have. We have a whole bunch of these. And let me see if I can just go through these with with you guys real quick. So the first one is Bodicea Iseni. I think I did a video on, or not a video, but I think I did a, on my Bodicea live stream, I think this one came up. Iseni sounds very familiar. Uh, I'll have to go back and look. I'll have to go back and look at my Bodicea the Victorious uh, video, but I think this one came up once before and then we did have digit and zach uh anbar december anbar december i've never heard of this but this brand digit and zach i don't know very well the only uh one that i've ever smelled is emperor's court which uh a bottle was very kindly sent to me by peter carter from um fragrance view and of uh, centauri perfumes so, Digit and Zach. Onbar December edition. Nice. Here it is. Onbar December. This came out last year. Resinous, sweet, elang, labdanum, vanilla, plum, raspberry, black pepper, rose, black currant, sandalwood, red pepper, ambergris, oud, frankincense, brown ambergris, patchouli, myrrh, sandalwood, apomponax, benzoin. Uh, Shamama tu, Shamama Tool, a, Amber Atar, Tonka Bean, Fossilized Amber, Cinnamon, and Tolu Balsam. Hell of a note listing there. And then, we have Roja's Fetiche from the Paper Label version. Alright, this will be a hell of a comparison video. So what we'll do is we will compare the more modern version of Fetiche, which I happen to really like. Um, I'm sure the paper version is better because normally the older versions happen to be better from my experience. That's why I love vintage fragrances. Um, but I love this perfume. I love Roja's Fetiche, so that'll make a, that will make a fun comparison video one day. And then we have YSL's Kaftan. I've heard about this. I've heard Mark talk about Kaftan. Um... Very few people talk about this YSL, uh, what do you want to call them, kind of their, you know, expensive line, their, their um, uh, high-end line and privé line, whatever it is. Kaftan is uh, bergamot, green mandarin orange, pink pepper, frankincense, benzoin, styrax, cystus absolute, and musk. So that should be a fun one to discuss. And then we have... Oops. We have 31 Rue Cambone Eau de Toilette. This will be great because I've got the uh, Eau de Parfum. So, oh, God. I can't wait to wear this in spring. If I make like a modern uh, spring list, 31 Rue Cambone would be on the list. I did a vintage spring list yesterday. You can go check out. But um, the if I ever do a, a modern spring list... 31 Rue Cambone would definitely be on that list. <laughs> and then we've got um, a 2013 bottle of Oud Ispahan, which is great because I think I have a newer little mini. Um, so I'll do a comparison video there one of these days. The OG Oud Ispahan. Um... And then we've got Jazeel Gala. This one I don't know anything about. I don't know anything about this Jazeel Gala. Uh, J-A-Z-E-E-L. J 
Jazio Gala. This is a woody floral, Indian rose absolute with Turkish rose, Indian oud, ambergris, frankincense, cedar wood, Indian oud, again, vetiver, patchouli, and sandalwood. And finally, last but definitely not least, we've got Spirit of Dubai, Abjar. Abjar. Uh, A-B-J-A-R. Let's look this bad boy up. <laughs> so this is um, the one with the horse on top. Spicy, animalic. I couldn't even read all these notes. Styrax, cypress, nutmeg, pine, clary sage, lavender, apple, cardamom, clove, bitter almond, grapefruit, aldehyde, cinnamon, pepper, saffron, bergamot, artemisia, mint, fruity notes. That's the top. <laughs> <laughs> the mid, balsamic notes, leather, honey, Indian oud, cashmere, and cypress, labdanum, akigala wood, myrrh, rose, birch leaf, cedar wood, earthy notes, frankincense, gaik wood, lily of the valley, hedion, geranium, and jasmine. That's the heart. A base of tobacco, civet, castorium, sandalwood, Australian sandalwood, patchouli, oud, musk, tolu balsam, gaik wood, amber, benzoin, sweet notes, tonka bean, vanilla, pralines, and vetiver. <gasps> Each each you know part top middle and bottom is more notes than every than most perfumes you know out there so uh, so yes this will be fun this will be very fun to uh, to dive into to explore you guys can go back in your little hole your little holder for now it's a cool little it's a cool little holder to hold the samples and then we've got some more a part two. So a part two is going to be uh, Nargesi, which I think this is also a spirit of Dubai, Nargesi. Uh, let's see. Nargesi. Nargesi. There we go. Yep, it is. This is the one with the rose on top. Uh, floral Oriental. You want to go through the notes? This one isn't as bad. Top of Damask Rose, Spicy Notes, Rose, Taif Rose, Bulgarian Rose, Pink Pepper, Aldehydes, Green Leafs, Oud, Cardamom, Dried Fruits, Elemi Resin, Orange, Fruity Notes, Saffron, Coffee, Candied Fruits, Turkish Rose, and Bergamot. And then a heart of ginger, chamomile, coriander, taif rose again, sandalwood, benzoin, patchouli, honey, vanilla, cipriol, and vetiver. Mid, or sorry, base of sandalwood, frankincense, amber, civet, caramel, leather, oak moss, moss, and castorium. <whistles> Quite the note listing. Um, okay, that is on the decant list. And then we have, what do we have? We have a lot more. I'll tell you that. And we have some full bottles coming from uh, from Cullen. Um, Perfumum Roma Ombra. I've been wanting to talk about this for a while. This ought to make a good video. Uh, Perfumum Roma Ombra. This is like many people think Ombra as um, Perfumum Roma Ombra. Many people mention Ombra as one of the best ambers in the game. I've never smelled it. Oh, wait a minute. Is this Ombra Aurea? It must be, right? They don't have a regular Ombra. It must be Ombra Aurea. Yeah, has to be. Myrrh, Ambergris, and Frankincense, and that's it. That is it, boys and girls. And I hear these Perfume Aromas are very linear. Uh, and then we have OG... Ooh, what is this? This one leaked a little bit. Um, OG, hmm, Ombra Fet Fetacine, hang on, let me try to, let me try to type in what it looks like, Ombra, ah, Ombra Fetish, ah, yes, 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 sorry. Fetish, okay, Ombre Fetish by Gutal. Um, that's good stuff. That's a brand I need to dive into more. 
And then we have Arabian Oud, Royal Oud. Um, Royal Oud. Royal Oud. But not the Creed. The Arabian Oud. Um, which is a uh, woody oriental with rose musk and Cambodian Oud. Nice. This is another brand I need to dive into more. This Arabian Oud. We've got Perfumum Roma Patchouli. Ah, so this is the other big uh, Perfumum Roma fragrance that uh, gets a lot of love. Profumum Patchouli, 2004 release. Patchouli, Amber, Frankincense, and Sandalwood. Their fragrances are very, um, very linear from what I hear. Ah, here we go. This one came up on the stream yesterday. Many people were asking, uh, one guy in particular was asking uh, over and over about this, and, and we I had to defer to Jonathan1970 because I've never smelled this one. This is Boz. Again, Spirit of Dubai. Boz. Uh, this is another big note listing. Someone told me it's like Spirit of Dubai's take on Diagolev, and I was like, oh shit, I might have to buy that. Black pepper, coriander, nutmeg, pepper, plum, aldehydes, clove, leather, saffron, star anise, coffee, cardamom, cinnamon, red berries, bergamot, mint in the top, heart of birch leaf, carnation, frankincense, geranium, leather, lily of the valley, rose, tuberose, ylang ylang, honey, tobacco, floral notes, jasmine, and orchids, base of capiba balsam, guarjum balsam, musk, castorium, Indian oud, patchouli, cistus, sandalwood, vetiver, amber, civet, costas, gaiac wood, labdanum, myrrh, prero balsam, tonka bean, praline, and vanilla. Quite the note listing. And then we've got Arabian Oud, Blue Oud. So Blue Oud by Arabian Oud. So Blue Oud is a woody animalic with Cambodian Oud. Blue Musk. Blue Musk. I don't think I'm familiar with what Blue Musk is. Um, in Indian Oud. Okay. It's on the decant list. We then have Zerjoff Begum, Beguium. I don't know how to say B E G U M. Zerjoff Beguium. Uh, B E G U M. Zerjoff, 2015, a creamy floral. Oh boy. Frasia, red berries, lemon, bergamot, Bulgarian rose, Damask rose, absolute, jasmine, sambac, absolute, Florentine iris, lilac. Lily of the Valley, Ylang Ylang, Amber, Vanilla Musk, Sandalwood, Rosewood, Patchouli, and Vetiver. The scent is exclusively available at Harrods London. Ah, it's a Harrods exclusive. Interesting. And then we have uh, Diwan, D-I-W-A-N. That name sounds familiar. Ah, that's also a spirit of Dubai. Okay. So this is um, a resinous oriental. All right, hold on to your hat, boys and girls. Here we go. Top. Frankincense, Bulgarian rose, dewberry, dewberry, pink pepper, raspberry, rose, Turkish rose, aldehydes, apple, cardamom, grapefruit, green leaves, orange, peach, plum, strawberry, woody notes is the top, heart of frankincense, oud, patchouli, powdery notes, saffron, sandalwood, amber, carnation, chamomile, cypriol, earthy notes, floral notes, geranium, iris, rhubarb, taif rose, vanilla, and honey in the heart. Base of frankincense, cedarwood, coffee, guarjum, balsam, musk, sandalwood, ambergris, balsamic notes, benzoin, caramel, castorium, gaikwood, leather, myrrh, tonka bean, Vanilla and white musk. I'm like one of those radio advertisements, you know, where they read at the end like an entire paragraph in five seconds. Man, the note listings on these Spirit of Dubai's are insane. They just put everything in there. Just everything. Just throw it all in there. Uh, and then we've got Picovaya Dama. I've heard a lot about this, Zerjoff. I have heard a lot about this. People will not stop talking about Picovaya Dama. P I. K O V 2014 release and this is um Bulgarian rose, Sicilian lemon, Neroli, Cal Calabrian bergamot, coriander, Omani frankincense, Turkish iris, Turkish iris, uh Atlas cedar, nutmeg, musk, Salinese sandalwood, bourbon vanilla and patchouli. And finally, we have Diwan Al-Shara. 
No clue. No clue what this one is. D1 Al Shara. Uh, ah, Al Shark, Dewan Al Shark, gotcha. Uh, Arabian Oud again, Indian Oud, Cambodian Oud, and Borneo Oud. Interesting. I'm excited to try these. I'm excited to try all these. All right, let me put these away, because otherwise I'll lose them. And if I lose them, we'll never get to them. All right, you can go right here. Okay, fun times. All right, they're safe. They are safe in their hole. Okay, so now that we've knocked out two unboxings, let's get to the most exciting one. No offense to the others, but I know there's some full bottles in here. I know there's some full bottles in here. Aha! Uh -huh. Here we go. Oh boy. Oh boy. I gotta get my handy dandy unboxing knife out. Alright, here we go. Let's open. I, sh I guess I should have maybe done this beforehand. These are very well packed. They had to come across the ocean. Oh yeah. Even my unboxing knife, which is a serious knife, is struggling. This is very well packed. Okay, come on out, baby. All right. We have Emilio Pucci, Senor Vivara for men. Mm, I hear great things about this, actually. Interestingly enough, I was hearing great things about this today. Someone was saying that it's uh, someone I trust. Someone you guys probably trust, if I said his name, was saying that this is uh, just as good, if not better, than Kenitze 10. Maybe even Etro's Goma. Huge expectations for uh, Emilio Pucci Senor Senora Vivara. I have to I have to write that down. I've got to make a note of these or I'll, I'll forget what they are. I'll forget I have them. Senora Vivara from 1970, a leathery animalic fragrance. Oh man. Mmm. My kind of fragrance. Okay, let's see what else we got. Oh. <laughs> it's like Christmas on Channel Ram. These are packed, packed, baby. I mean, I've had some tight packings before, but damn. Gosh. All right. Two out. Second one is uh, Nikolai's New York Intense. Okay, I already have a bottle of this, but... Uh, you cannot go wrong with old New York Intense. Old New York Intense. It's probably my, uh, it's probably my favorite, it's probably my favorite Nikolai that I've come, that I've stumbled across so far. Come on out. Don't be shy. Come on out, baby. All right. This one is uh, Van Cleef and Arpels Gem. Van Cleef and Arpels Gem. Do you guys know this one? I don't know Van Cleef and Arpels Gem because the only Van Cleef and Arpels I know are 
Van Cleef and our pals Porom and Sar. So what is Van Cleef and our pals gem? Uh, 1987 for women. A spicy floral sheepra. Look at that juice. Blood red. I love it. Coriander, cardamom, myrtle, rosewood. Plum, cypress, peach. This sounds amazing. Jasmine, clove, tuberose, orris. Root, carnation, rosy, langy lang, iris, vetiver, oak moss, civet, amber, patchouli, and vanilla. And then, come on, baby. Come on, baby. There we go. Uh, Ego East Cologne Concentrate. You can never have enough of this stuff, man. You can never have enough Ego East. Someone was asking the other day. Maybe yesterday on the stream what the best um, what the best sandalwood fragrance is. And I said Bois de Zeal, but I mean Ego East could easily be the best in many people's minds. The big package. The big package. <sighs> Trying to do this without cutting myself. Okay. All right. Here we go. It's like Christmas morning for Ram. Man, if I ever need a package wrapped, I am I am calling Cullen. My goodness. Feel like I need to sharpen my knife. You know you want to come out. You know you want to come out. Oh. oh. Like I just gave birth. Oh. Look at this. Tell me that's not one of the most beautiful things you've ever seen. This is an original opium, vintage, eau de toilette, um, oh my god, I, I mean, I've got some vintage bottles of this stuff, not in this particular bottle though, the original, oh fuck, I mean, one of my favorite fragrances of all time, this is the Charles of the Ritz bottle you can tell by the white writing on the bottom um man and you can see the 80 proof right here oh what a beautiful bottle what a gift what an absolute gift this is thank you thank you Colin seriously you are you are absolutely the man um Thank you, my friend. I I do not feel worthy. I do not feel worthy, I'll tell you that. Um, so very much appreciated. That's that's awesome. You know what? This is gonna go for right now, you're gonna go sit right here. Wait, are you safe here? I feel like I should find a safer spot. You can sit right here. Right here in the front.
Okay, so now that we got the unboxings out of the way, 30 minutes in, let's talk about Serge Luton Participe, La Participe Passe. I've been wearing it today as my scent of the day. Again, would not have the chance to talk about this on the channel if not for one of you. Thank you to my all my perfume god people that send me stuff. Um, La Participe Passe. So, this is one of the more recent Serge Luton releases. And La Participe Passe basically means past moments that surge into the present. Okay. Had to, I'm sorry. Bad joke. But uh, it's true, past moments that surge into the present. And I got a very visceral, almost emotional reaction to this fragrance the first time that I smelled it. Um, and I very quickly actually wrote out multiple pages of um, how it made me feel. Before I read anything about it, I just wrote. I just like went, I just went, I just started writing, you know, smelling, writing, smelling, writing. And I think I pretty much stand by what I wrote about this fragrance. Even now that I'm wearing it as my scent of the day, uh, I have smelled it once before. I wore it to bed once, so I've given it a good amount of wear. I mean, you can't see how much was in there previously, but I've given it a fair amount of wear. And um, this is going to be one that I'm going to put on my on my Serge Luton wish list, I'll tell you that. So here's kind of how it makes me feel. I'm going to go through the way it makes me feel, my thoughts as I wore it, and then I'm going to kind of read you a blurb about some things that Serge Luton say. It's always interesting uh, reading the uh, press releases from Serge Luton because they're half, most of them don't make any sense anyways. It's like Serge Luton got high and wrote his press releases and no one understands them except for him. However, uh, I enjoy reading them. I think they're still awesome to read even though they're super artsy. So take that with a grain of salt once we read the actual blurb that Serge Luton himself, I think he writes the press releases himself. So, La Participe Passe. I have been pretty rough on the House of Serge Luton's newer releases. I said all of their good stuff is in the past. Actually, even when a friend, uh, someone who works in, you know, with Serge Luton, uh, reached out and said, hey man, I want to send you some bottles for the thank you that you do on the YouTube channel. I said, I only want the old bottles. I only want the ones that look like this. And he went, you sure? You don't want any of the new ones? And I went, no, not really. And then, of course, I ended up saying, yes, okay, I'll take Because in some of them, you can only get them in the new one, like La Couche du Diablo, which I still think is the best recent Serge Luton release. I still think La Couche du Diablo is the best recent one. But La Participe Passe instantly, I would say, gets put up there, as far as I'm concerned, um, with the good new Serge Luton releases. La, La Couche du Diablo came out one year later, one year after La Participe Passe, right? Um, and so I can kind of now lump them together in my mind as, as two good modern releases. And uh, I the, the thing that I was hardest on them about is they weren't Serge Luton enough. So if you know the House of Serge, it has a very specific... It was a great niche house to start with back in the day because you could find these little 50 mil bottles for, uh, you know, 50 bucks at discounters back in the day. It was a great house to uh, kind of explore different fragrances that you're not going to get in the mainstream. He had a very particular aesthetic, uh, a style, the way the fragrances were done. They were different from everyone else. And that's what made Serge Dutton fragrances so great. And this is the exception. This is the exception to the rule of me saying I think the best of Serge Luton is kind of behind him because now I found two exceptions 2018 and 2019 where there are good fragrances in the new style I just don't like the new I really don't like the new packaging and I really really don't like these I think these are these Graziel Cial Grate I don't know I forget which way it is but um I don't like these at all. I think they're uh, dreary and dark. You can't see the juice. Like here, you can see the beautiful juice color. Each of the Serge Luton light them like a beautiful little soldier. Um, and this is just dreary and dark. And this is Borneo 1834. And I was worried about reformulations. And I think these have been kind of played with as far as I'm concerned. 
The dry down of this is very plasticky. And there's a weird amber wood note, which I don't know. I'm, it's the only one I've ever smelled in a Serge de Tom bottle, and it happens to be in this bottle, which makes me think they were played with in 2018. There were some reformulations. I don't know. I'm just speculating. But La Participe Passe um, is, like I said, the exception to the rule of always going to older Serge. This is one I'm going to try to get a bottle of. Um, and again, I can put it alongside La Couche du Diable as two of my favorites. There's a lot of elements uh, that can be associated with vintage Serge du Temps in this release, okay? In my opinion, there is fire, first and foremost. So here's, let me set the scene for you. Um, imagine that you're cooking a fire, and inside of, of that fire is this resinous feel of La Couche du Diable, which came the very next year, okay? So maybe Serge Luton had something in his brain in 2018 or 2019 that, you know, these two kind of played off of each other because the fire that I imagine kind of being cooked in this cauldron in my image of La Participe Passe, I imagine inside of that cauldron is kind of the cystus labdanum and the oud from La Couche du Diable. Like La Participe Passe was literally cooking, La Couche du Diable, which ended up coming next in 2019. And there, so there's this fire, there's this cooking, there's this resinous feel. And have you ever heard my description of Filan Aguil? Have you ever heard me describe Filan Aguil or try to describe it? I think uh, it's a very hard fragrance to describe, but... Have you ever heard me try to describe Filan Aguil? It is basically a... It's basically the, the image on Filan Aguil is you touch a tree in the forest. It's sappy. You get sap all over your fingers. Tree sap. Sticky, piney tree sap that you can't get rid of, right? There's no soap around and, and no matter where you rub your hands, it's still on there, right? It's a very sticky tree sap. And... In in the distance, there's a fire burning, but far in the distance, not right there in, in front of you, but in the distance, you can kind of smell smoke emanating, frankincense smoke, but you're in the wide openness of a beautiful, bright day. It's high noon, the sun is in the sky, there's not a cloud in the sky, and you know how on a cold winter's day like that, uh, when you're in the forest, if you've ever kind of been in that situation, and you look up and you just realize how fresh the air kind of feels around you. There's this freshness to the air. Uh, and the day and the sun hitting you, you know, gives the, the combination of like this wide open freshness of being in the forest, right? Not a cloud in the sky. La Participe Passe, for me, is basically you're walking all day to get to said fire that you come across in Filan Aguil. Like you're looking for the fire. The smoke is in the background in Filan Aguil and it's day. In La Participe Passe, you've been walking all day to find that fire. You're walking towards the smoke and you finally arrive. But by the time you arrive, it's not a beautiful fresh day anymore. It's not noon anymore. It's not high noon anymore either. It's now full dark. It's nightfall. It's full dark, okay? And you arrive at the fire in the woods and the shadows flickering off the faces of the people around you. Because you're not alone, of course. And the... Um, so you get this flickering light, this dark transparent, this dark versus light flicker from the fire. And you realize that the fire that you're kind of coming up on is not just some randomly burning fire in the forest, but it's actually a man-made fire with the cauldron on it. And um, so you look at the cauldron and you think, okay, whatever's in there must clearly be done by now. But uh, this time, when you look in the pot, the La Couche du Diable Cystus Labdanum Oud thing that you thought was in there, actually turns out to be this deep chocolate, this deep, dark, chocolatey, bubbling cauldron, cauldron with resins and balsams and some fruits. Right now, the fruits are kind of, uh, you know, kept at bay. 
There's a little bit of fruitiness in the first couple hours, but the fruitiness for me comes out even more into the dry down. And um, you sit there looking at this cauldron kind of bubbling up, right? You see the dark versus the light from the fire on the people's faces around you. It's full dark. And you can still see the smoke rising, but you're in the forest. And you kind of look around, and you, you just notice all of a sudden how alive the trees feel, right? It almost feels like um, the trees in the forest are alive around you. And you can see their leaves moving kind of in motion, even in the dark because of the fire. You can kind of see the outlines of their leaves moving. And um, almost as if the trees are working together to try to tell you something. And trying to work really hard to have you notice this kind of um, pine sap feeling over the smoke of the boiling cauldron. You know, like they're trying to call out to you to reach this pine sap from Filanagil to pay attention to it more. Like it's trying to ca capture your attention. But the boiling cauldron with the shades of dark and light are just too transfixative for you. You can't kind of take your eyes off of it. And you realize that that dark chocolate is starting to kind of cook down and giving way not to like a sweet caramel, but imagine the color of the chocolate kind of uh, turning into like a more brown uh, caramel color, if you will. Like the, the color seems like it's beginning to get less dark chocolate, more brown. And there is this peppery, smoky, cumin, spicy feel that starts to emit from the cauldron. It is unsweet. That's the biggest thing. It's unsweet. So that's the image that I get when I smell uh, the participe passe. Let me read you the little blurb of what Serge Luton has to say about the scent. By the way, there's only three notes. Uh, only three notes listed. One is Egyptian balsams. The other is resins. And finally, fruits. That's it. It's all Serge Luton says. So here's kind of his thoughts on La Participe Passe. It says, Mr. Luton's muses on, on his creation, La Participe Passe, as follows. Not much time separates this moment from that in the past when, rather than displaying a shot on a mobile screen, a photograph was passed from hand to hand in chemical baths before it was seen, justifiably so. The continuation or not of the operation resulted from the desired exposure on film, using a projector in order to render the inverted values on the negative, what it was bound, before reading, to return to its original meaning, was projected on white paper. The paper was blank, and before it was drowned in the developer, silent. Yet it is from this drowning at the bottom of a bath, under slightly shaken chemical liquid, that from the proof slowly rises the image. Only it does not grant the photographer his first vision. On this condition, only will he fish out the proof again to submerge it in a fixing bath. Whether the photo is framed in wood, placed on a bedside table, hammered into a wall, or in order to keep the memory of those who are not yet underground, it is screwed into marble above an epitaph. It is not my purpose. If this warning or joke answers some of the questions you might have about a past that invites itself into the present. So much the better. On the other hand, if provided with the words or their second meanings, shoots, mobile, reading, projection, inverted values, negative, revealing, immersion, proof, image, print, or fixing it, it did not summon from your experience what manifests itself in the present. It would be necessary to increase the length of the page in my notebook because the one it grants me is not enough to contain it. I could probably read that five times and you still would have to scratch your head at a couple of those things. But you know what? I like that. I like that. There's a... Um, there is a image below that. If you go to Fragrantica and type in La Participe Passe, you'll see this image right below the paragraph that I read you, which was the Serge Duton press release. Um, and it basically looks like uh, two women of a mirror image of each other, 
one looking this way, one looking this way. You can't see their body, just their head. And in the middle of the two is the bottle of La, La Participe Passe. But over both of their ears, right, so on each side of the face that you can see, almost looks like uh, uh, headphones, maybe? Or, I don't know. I don't know what, I'm not sure what that is supposed to be. I would assume it's supposed to be headphones, but uh, they both have that over their ears and the bottle's in the middle. So, um, yes, it's, uh, it's... Obviously, their press release is always fun to play with, but um, Serge was obviously playing with a very similar theme when he made La Participe Passe and when he made La Couche du Diable. These two have this oriental thick feel to them. And, um, you know, if you heard my interpretation of Lone Star Memories, just as an example, I'm going off course here. I'm rambling a little bit, but... Um, Lone Star Memories is a perfume that kind of came to mind when I was smelling this, not because of the smell, but because of the imagery that it portrayed in my head. I actually wrote a Fragrantica article for this, and I never write Fragrantica articles, but I did. I wrote one on, on Lone Star Memories way back when, and, um, uh, I remember just the image that it gives you, this cowboy sitting by an open fire. You can smell the leather. You can smell the campfire burning. You can smell the coffee that he kind of made. And, you know, it's a huge photograph in your mind when you, when you, this is a giant fragrance. His best, I think. The imagery that Lone Star Memories kind of portrays in your head is, I think, um, what makes this his masterpiece, uh, you know, uh, Le du Desert Marocain and, and Accord du Desert are, are obviously great. There's nothing wrong with either of those. But this in particular, Lone Star Memories, just flashes this image in my head so clear of this cowboy sitting by the fire, tired from his day's work, you know, there with his horse. It's slightly animalic. And, you know, you can just, I can just see it clear as day as if I'm reading it in a book when I smell this. And that's kind of the feeling that I get from La Participe Passe. Um, except for it's the image I told you earlier of being in Serge Luton's world. First with um, Filanagio, and then ultimately with the next fragrance that came next, which is uh, La Couche du Diable. And I have to admit, I, I, like, being in, I like being in the Serge Luton world. Um, I like that you can kind of see connections between the fragrances. Uh, this has to be a Christopher Sheldrake. There's no doubt about it in my mind. Um, the I don't get... So a couple things, if you read other reviews on La Participe Passe, a couple things I made note of. Um, I don't get coffee per se in La Participe Passe. Like some say they get this coffee note. Instead... What I get is, go back to my idea of people sitting around this cauldron, right? This interplay between dark and light, you know, at nighttime, but the light from the fire is kind of burning off of people, uh, burning off of their faces. You can see kind of half of, of people. And imagine you can see some of them drinking coffee. You can't smell the coffee because they're on the other side of the fire. You're far away. And, but you know what coffee smells like, and it's just seeing the image of someone kind of drinking it brings that smell to your mind. That's more the coffee feeling in here. It's not like you're smelling real coffee. It's like this embellished coffee note, if you will. Um, and it triggers this scent memory in your brain, right? Again, from the past, kind of like from the past, interestingly enough. And, um... In the dry down, some people say they get this immortel note. I either my nose isn't good enough to pick it up, or I'm just not getting it yet. But I don't get this immortel note that everyone else seems to smell. I do get the fragrance turning more fruity and more sour. So the further along in the dry down it gets, 
you'll start to notice more of the fruits and more of the amber starts to come out as if you're smelling like a traditional amber, less so like that resinous labdanum oud of La Couche du Diable, like it starts out with, and more so towards the traditional ambery, you know, dry down of, you know, something like Ambre Sultan, something like that, you know? Uh, so yes, that's my... Um, that's my take on La Participe Passe. Really like it. Honestly, really like it. And I'll see if I can maybe get a bottle. Um, but yeah, it's um, it's 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 a shame I overlooked this just because it was in the new bottles. I almost overlooked this because it was in the new bottles too. And this is one of my favorite labdanum fragrances. So I just, I think Serge just, I think they just need to get back to what they did great. Like, you know, the design really, I think, bothered some people. I was one of those people. I don't like the new design. And I know it's supposed to be all about the juice inside, but it's literally stopping. And I don't like the formulation that they've made in these bottles, you know, personally. I I, I feel like, um, I feel like that uh, there's some sort of, you know, change in smell to me. I don't want to say it's been reformulated, but it seems like that's not what Borneo 1834 was supposed to smell like in the original bottles that look like this or the, or the bell jar or whatever it was. So yeah, that's, that's an issue with Surge to me. Um, but I know he's getting older and, but I really do respect his work and, and there's a lot of Surge's left that I still need to smell, but it's been a pleasure getting to know this one. So thank you. I think Nikki sent me these samples. Thank you, Nikki. Uh, I think she goes by NT as her little user as her username on YouTube. And thank you to everyone who sent me stuff today. Honestly, it's an honor. We'll keep this video under an hour. Maybe we'll do a live stream today or tomorrow with some blind sniffing of some of these fragrances. And uh, thanks for watching. Let me know your thoughts below. Like all that good stuff a YouTuber is supposed to say for the algorithm. Like and subscribe and all that stuff. It does help the algorithm. And I love interacting with you guys. So cheers, and I'll hopefully see you soon. Bye now.